Hi, my name is Haley Ross. I'm a biologist and botanist, and my focus is on surveying for rare plants before our harvest activities. When people think of endangered species, mostly think of animals. Plants often get forgotten, especially in a forest. You look around and all you see is plants. Um, but just like animals, plants require certain conditions to survive and uh, disturbances to those conditions can harm them. So how do we determine which plants are rare and require uh, protection? Well, the um, California Native Plant Society maintains an inventory of rare plants which is adopted by state agencies. So plants on those lists are ranked according to how endangered they are. And also there are several species that are listed by the State and Federal Endangered Species Act. When we survey for rare plants, we follow a protocol that requires uh, the surveyor to keep an inventory of all the plants that are observed on the survey. Um, and that allows for some assurance that any rare plant, even if it wasn't expected or specifically being looked for, uh, that is rare, is going to be detected. Uh, to begin a plant survey, we start out in the office with what we call scoping, and that's when we check all the uh, state databases and the uh, rare plant inventory to find out what rare plants we would expect in the area that we're surveying. So once we have a scoping list, a list of plants, uh, rare plants expected to be in the area, we can time the surveys based on the blooming time or when those plants will be able to be seen on the survey. So usually we have to visit an area several times spread out during the blooming season uh, to thoroughly survey and know that we would have seen the rare plants if they were there. So if we do find a rare plant in a harvest plan during these surveys, uh, the next step is to figure out how to mitigate the damages and or protect the plant entirely from the proposed activities. Now, you can't just put all rare plants in a bucket and apply the same exact measures to every plant. Every species has a different natural history. For example, some plants need to be completely protected from disturbance. They may depend on um, fungus in the soil and a certain amount of shade, a certain amount of sun. Other plants are uh, what we call disturbance species. Those are plants that pop up after disturbance, either uh, natural disturbance like fire or a tree falling in the woods. And those plants require a lot of sun and they will pop up after a disturbance and then naturally decline as the canopy increases. So as you can imagine, those different species would need different protection measures. So it's important for a, a, any sustainable management plan to include protections for rare and endangered species, plant, animal, or otherwise, because in the big picture, we're trying to preserve biodiversity.